Kings Island opened in 1972. It's been passed from owner to owner a few times, but ever since it became a Cedar Fair Park, it's been on the rise. It's been on the rise so much, it became my all-time favorite park. That's mainly because of the atmosphere and operations, but also because they've built up a great collection of coasters. I've been to this park six times, five of those times being over the last eight years, so I've ridden all their coasters a bunch of times. As great as they are, Kings Island still gets criticized for not having a standout coaster. Maybe today, we can change that. Let's walk around the park, go coaster by coaster, and find one thing we can do to make it better. Some coasters have easy fixes, some are more challenging, and some are downright ridiculous. So, I'm giving each one a possibility grade. We'll go from easy, it can be done today with no effort, to medium, it would take some effort and money, to hard, would take a pretty significant effort, to fantasy, things that are just not realistic. Let's enter the park and take a ride into Planet Snoopy. The first coaster we run into is Great Pumpkin Coaster, the ENF Miler from 1992. A very basic oval kids coaster, and the perfect ride for kids to break into the coaster world. In fact, this was my daughter's first coaster of the summer, her second coaster overall, and there is one thing I would love to change. Get rid of that jolt at the top of the lift hill. Some of the kids riding this are two years old and they have very floppy necks, and it would be amazing if they could come off without getting whiplash. I don't know what it's going to take to fix this. It does seem to be an issue on a lot of kids' coasters, but not major coasters. Whatever you do for the big ones, do for the small ones. On the possibility scale, I'm putting this as a medium. Not a major effort, but something that can't be done right now. Moving through Planet Snoopy, we hit Woodstock Express, a park original. This PTC family wooden coaster, and there isn't anything wrong with it. It's one of the best kids slash family coasters. Good size, length, smoothness, they even run two trains. I guess if I were to change anything, it would be to give it new modern trains. These cramped trains feel old, and eventually they might want to invest in something more modern. Just keep the buzz bar, that's much appreciated. I put this as medium. It would cost some money, but it's entirely possible. Walking to the back of Planet Snoopy, here's the newest coaster at Kings Island, Snoopy Soapbox Racers. This Vacoma family boomerang is super smooth. It's very tall for a family coaster at 75 and a half feet. It's got some intensity. It has bad capacity, but there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing is, it's 672 feet long. There's not much track, and you can feel it's a short ride. I would give it a couple more twists and turns, maybe a nice airtime hill. Just extend the layout a little bit. It's basically a figure eight layout. There's not much room here, but they could find a way. I put this in the fantasy camp. There's no way they're changing that layout. One more coaster in Planet Snoopy, Woodstock Air Rail. This Vacoma Hang and Bang used to be called Flying Ace Aerial Chase. This year, it got its new name, but it doesn't matter what you call it. It's still a hang and bang. Not all of these are the same. You find different restraints on all of them. Some have terrible horse collars. Every bad transition, you smash your head. Luckily, Woodstock Air Rail doesn't have that problem. As nice as lap bars would be, I don't mind these restraints. The most glaring problem with this was the track. The ride felt so janky, the wheels rattling around on the rails, so I think this needs to get retracked. Would Kings Island really retrack a 23-year-old family coaster? Or would they ask Vacoma for something new like Dragonflyer? I don't know. Regardless, I'm marking this as hard. It would be a major commitment to either retract this or replace it. No more kids' coasters. Let's walk across the path to my favorite in the park, Diamondback. This B&M Hyper from 2009 is an airtime factory. From that 215-foot drop, massive camelbacks, and splashdown finale, every hill seems to hit just right, and I love it. This coaster is sitting right around my top 10, so how could I possibly make it better? The one problem I have is the rattle. This does seem to be getting worse. Before, it seems like it was bad on the hill after the turnaround. Now, it seems like it has a rattle on a bunch of the valleys. I heard the land that Kings Island sits on is kind of soft, and it makes their big coasters feel rough. I'm not sure what Kings Island can do, but the ride would be so much better if it was smooth from start to finish. I'm putting this as medium. Maybe they put extra bracing in some spots. Maybe they retract small sections in the valleys. I don't know. Right next door, we have another great coaster, Mystic Timbers. This is GCI's finest American coaster. Even after seven years, it's glossy smooth. It has an out of control feeling. It gives awesome airtime. It could afford to be longer, but I don't think length is a big problem. If I were to change one thing, it would be that shed. The whole marketing campaign about what's in the shed turned out to be a big letdown. But what if it wasn't? The most obvious thing to do here is give it a drop track. It could drop you and bring you back up. Even better would be a randomized finish, kind of like Primordial at Lagoon. 
This may be tougher logistically, having a drop track or a tilt track forward or backward, but if they could find a way, that would be perfect. But that would be a fantasy. I'll stick with the drop track and I'll put that in the medium camp. It wouldn't be that insane to make the brake run at a drop track. Walking across the back of the park, we find the Beast, the park's most legendary coaster, over 7,300 feet long, set out in the woods. Not the most thrilling elements, but has its own unique character. Some people would say, get rid of that straight track and put in more hills. Some people think this is crazy rough. I think its layout is fine for what it is, and I thought it was as smooth as you could expect. On my last vlog, I mentioned the trims. They do hit pretty hard, but I didn't really mind because the ride still feels out of control. That being said, I would love to ride this without the trims. Just let the ride rip. I want to see how crazy this would be. I'm sure that would tear the track apart and it would get very rough over time, but I can't imagine how great it would be if they just let this run at its full potential. This is an easy fix. Just turn the trims off. Maintenance-wise, not so easy, but we're not worried about that right now. Let's walk to the center of the park and Backlot Stunt Coaster, the premier rides launch coaster from 2005. This is somewhat a family coaster, less than 2,000 feet of track, has a launch but it's only 40 miles an hour, and it relies on theming to make the ride. It was added by Paramount, themed to the Italian job movie, and now it has a generic stunt driver theme. I think the best thing to improve the ride is to improve the theme. The easy fix would be to reactivate everything in the show section, get the helicopter working, make the explosion more consistent. I don't think this is really a problem at Kings Island, but the other parks that have this coaster, sometimes you roll right through this section. After the helix, you also drop into some loose freeway theming. I think they could enclose this section and make it more immersive, almost like you're speeding at night. Give it a rock and roller coaster vibe. I put this as medium difficulty. It wouldn't require any retracking, just a show building and some new effects. Into the Coney Mall, let's talk about Racer. The park's original major coaster, this is still going strong, giving a smooth ride, racing consistently, and it's obvious Kings Island cares about this ride. The airtime could be better, so if they wanted to retrack it and shave 5 feet off every hill, I would not complain, but that's never going to happen in a million years. This ride has two tracks that mirror each other. One side doesn't seem much different from the other, so why not mix it up? This solution is something they did for years. For decades, actually. From 1982 all the way till 2008, they had one side running backwards. I think once Cedar Fair took over, they wanted to give it a more classic feel, racing red versus blue. Less gimmicky with forward versus backward. But right now, I ride one side and don't feel compelled to ride the other side. If they were to have one side forward and one side backward, I would definitely ride both sides every time. I think this is an easy fix. Just turn one train backward like they used to. Let's go into Area 72 and the park's B&M Giga, Orion. This takes a lot of heat, not just for being not the full 300 feet tall, but also for its layout. It's 5,321 feet long, kind of short for a Giga. At the speed these travel, it doesn't take long to cover all that track. I think it could be longer, but that's not the main issue. I think the whole thing needs a redesign. Giga coasters thrive when they have lower the ground elements that showcase speed. Orion misses that mark. That first wave turn hill doesn't do anything. Either make this a camelback or do something lower the ground. Instead of that drawn out helix some people call Orion's belt. Extend the track. Emulate Fury 325 as it darts out to the treble clef. Those snappy low turns are awesome. This would add more great elements and make the ride longer. They had room to do it, they just didn't do it. I loved this ride at first, but the more I ride it, the more I think B&M missed the mark. And I definitely think Fury spoiled us by showing what a B&M Giga could be. This is a fantasy. There's no way they retract this coaster. Staying in Area 72, we have Flight of Fear, the premier ride's indoor launch looper. This is very well themed on the outside. From the government hangar, the spaceship inside the queue, the aliens in the station. This is almost Disney level theming from the time you approach the ride, all the way until you launch out the station. However, once you enter the main ride building, it's just pitch black. If they wanted to carry on the great theme from start to finish, they should add some on-ride visual effects. You think of Space Mountain. The whole ride, you can tell you're racing through space. Something like that would be awesome aside from just darkness. This would be a medium change. Definitely would take time and money, but nothing ridiculous. Heading out of Area 72 in the Coney Mall, let's ride Adventure Express, the Aero Mine Train. This sits on a perch and dives down a hill, having a mid-course lift hill, then using all that speed to get back down the hill, giving a nice long ride. This does have some random jolts, but it's an Aero Mine Train. It's gonna punch you in the kidneys a few times. It's just what it does. This ride is famous for its finale. That enclosed lift hill with all those stone drummers, building up anticipation, all to dump you back off in the station. If they wanted to make this ride better, they should extend that lift, carry on its theming, and give it one more swooping drop. If you kept that drop enclosed, you could even keep the drummers. Maybe they shoot arrows at you while you zip by. Not literally, but that's what it would seem like. 
It wouldn't have to be a big extension, just enough to provide one more thrill before the station. Still, this is fantasy. There's no way they extend this Aero Mine Train. It's amazing enough they gave it a facelift last year. A whole new section is too much to ask for. Let's finish an action zone, starting with Banshee, the monster B&M invert. This is still the world's longest inverted coaster, and one of the newest dating back to 2014. It has an awesome drop, a great sequence of elements, good variety, giving some great intensity and hang time. It looks great. It's just a very complete ride. It does have best restraints, and even though these do suck on dive coasters, I don't mind them on Banshee. My fix would be the same as for Diamondback, just smooth it out. This might suffer the same problem when it comes to the ground being too soft, but this has a weird rattle if you sit near the back. I thought it was nice and smooth in the front, but as I move back to the middle, I could definitely feel it. It doesn't seem like new track is the problem. Maybe just more supports or better bracing. Maybe it's not possible at all, but I think the effort itself would put this in the medium camp. It's not that bad, but getting rid of that rattle would be the best thing to improve the ride. Wandering off to the middle of nowhere, let's go to the Bat, the Aero Suspended Coaster, a near clone of Vortex at Canada's Wonderland. That was the original, Bat was modeled after it, and this plays much higher off the ground. This ride is fast and furious, one of the best suspended coasters out there, if not the best, but it's very, very short. It hits that brake run with a head of steam, so why not extend the layout? It has plenty of speed, it has plenty of height. It seems like they could have gone out one more time, staying low to the ground, and I don't think you would even need a lift hill to get back to the station. If they did this, it would be by far the best suspended coaster, but this is a fantasy. This is over 30 years old, and they would need Vekoma or SNS to Frankenstein extra track onto this thing. Last coaster, and one that seems like it may have one foot out the door. Let's talk Invertigo. This inverted boomerang is actually pretty rare. This is the only one in America, so on its own, it's pretty good. I think the coaster is very intense, and I actually like it. There isn't much they can do to improve it, but I thought of something awesome. Keep that face-off seating, but make the car spin. Give it a nice, steady, controlled spin from start to finish, and that would be one of the most disorienting rides ever. Some might call this a fantasy, but I don't think it's impossible. I'll put this as hard. Nothing like this currently exists, but it doesn't seem far-fetched. If Invertigo has a future at King's Island, I hope they do this one day. I'd be excited to ride it. So, there you go. I just improved all 15 coasters at King's Island. You're welcome. Let me know what you think about my solutions, what you would do different for any of these rides, and if you have anything else to add, sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, and if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. If you want to see more episodes in this series, I have a playlist, that link's down below. And if you're a big fan of King's Island, check out my full-length documentary. I'll put that as a card on my end screen. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.